This is a great little game um, that I discovered uh, recently in Scratch uh, and in many ways for me uh, shows you some of the beauty of Scratch. It's simplicity, its ability to create uh, a world which has sort of different levels um, and here I think the game design has been really good because they're only giving you a focus that of a little part of the world and strangely enough, that actually makes it more mysterious. Um, and that's just, you know, really fabulous. It gives you a really great element to the game. So that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about how to develop your games and giving you the seven steps of making a successful game. So let's let's go to that immediately and have a look at it. So there are seven clear ideas. Um, first of all, there's one, develop the ideas, develop winning strategy, develop the things that you control in a game, uh, have a good tension between goodies and baddies, um, have many rooms, um, that's really useful, um, uh, it expands the game, uh, have excellent graphics and good endings. Let's jump straight in and discuss all of those now. Um, so, the first one is ideas. Well, ideas comes from two sources. First of all, good, solid research. Make sure you know your information. Um, and for that, let's go, let's go and have a look at our site and see what we can help you with there. So you can see here, under resources, insects, you can see here we've got lots of information on the hoverfly, dung beetle, and mayflies. Most importantly, these little blue ones are link you to either a video or images, or in some cases, a table, which gives you all the useful information you will know. You'll need to know lifespan, food, predators, habitats, hazards. So, you know, it should give you lots of that information during the research phase. You've got to choose one of those three. Um, and then what we're going to do is we kind of come and brainstorm and we're going to brainstorm with a, getting a really great um, um, uh, great all your great ideas and get them down on a big sheet of paper color them in um, draw ideas out um, think about whether you, if you were an insect, what you would enjoy, and take it from there. Once you've done that, we're on to the next stage. So the next stage of this is developing a winning strategy. And there are loads of different strategies for games. We've picked out uh, five which are useful for insects. You can develop your, or your own, please do, but here's five which could really work. At the simplest level you could just do an animated story explaining the insect and if your graphics are great it will it will stand just a great chance. People love watching those things. Um, the next one is doing a task against a set time and so um, we we could have in this case a hoverfly visiting loads of different flowers um, and a bird in this uh, chasing it down. So that that would be you know a, a clear clear game strategy. You could go on a quest, and I think at this stage I'm going to just show you this this quest one. So let's transition over here to uh, the quest one look and have a look. Oh, he's dead there. Well, this is our hedgehog game, which we teach Scratch um, by teaching you how to do really quite complicated games. This is a quest game. Um, the hedgehog has to go around eating good things and then goes into different gardens. This is an exa example of different rooms. And you can see he's eating, he's trying to get uh, water, but he's got to stay away from the badger, he's got to stay away from the hole, the netting, and he doesn't know which way to go. Some of the ways are good, some of them are bad. So you can see there, that being a case of a bad place. Um, so that's the quest approach. 
from Quest, I want you to I, I want to go down and talk about strategy. This is games like chess and drafts. You might want to have you might have to plot the best route round a set of flowers to visit the most in a set amount of time. Uh, these are quite complicated to develop, but addictive to play. Um, Finally, population. Ants are all about magnifying their numbers, so populations can be really important. So I wanted to come and have a look at this one. Um, so let's let's go back here and um, let's have a look at this one. It's one of my favourite ones. Um, it's all based on a queen ant. Um, who comes along, digs a burrow. Once it's dug a burrow, its wings drop off and uh, it can, it's ready to lay an egg. So that's quite ecologically correct. Um, I can't yet go into the shop. I think I can now. And I have buy some eggs. We'll come back uh, and maybe have a look at how they're doing uh, shortly. So... Um, Let's go back to our presentation and discuss the next phase. So we've done population, and the next phase is three, controlling a game. And that's all about the variables you use. Um, important things to measure are things like lives, health, health points, damage points, things collected, time, score. Here you can see score is being used. If score is greater than 100, say you win and stop all. So you can see that these variables, things we measure, are um, used to make the critical decisions in a game. And so they're really essential. Um, let's, so that's controlling a game. Let's go and move on to goodies and baddies. Uh, goodies and baddies are really an excellent way of creating a sort of tension in the game. And that's what you need. Uh, we use the, the goodies and baddies mo mode uh, model in our hedgehog game. And here you can see there were the netting, the badgers, the holes, the cars you could be squashed by. And the good things were uh, water, uh, worms, beetles. Um, um, and um, that just created a great balance. These things were randomly assigned in the game, and that creates um, also an extra tension. So uh, let's just have a little look at, um, uh, you know, where goodies and bad... Oh, look, our, our, our creatures have died. Let's just uh, close that. Um I, I never go back there um, quick enough. So goodies and baddies um, are, you can get the goodies and baddies information in the key facts section of our website. And that is in resources insects. Okay. Now, um, let's look at uh, i'll quickly go through some goodies and baddies of the different creatures so like dung beetles good things or anything which uh poos any herb of all which poos having good quality pastures who eats dung beetles crows foxes badgers bats owls and yes those pesticides are a problem Hoverflies, just give me flowers lots of flowers especially yellow ones um and aphids uh, the baddies are ants, spiders, wasps, dragonflies, and yes, pesticides again. Uh, mayflies, well, they, they, they need all sorts of different water in the larvae stage. Um, they need algae, they need little bits of plant. Um, but the baddies are water beetles, dragonfly, fish and birds, and yes, something from us, pollution. So that's how you get goodies and baddies, guys. Uh, as you expand on, you'll, you might want to make your game a little bit more uh, advanced. As you could see with the quest game for the hedgehog, we had many different rooms and 
that was one way of it. Another way is to create a scrolling game. Uh, I think what I'll do now is just show you an example of a scrolling game. And that should be, uh, yeah, should be clear enough. Uh, this is quite a nice little scrolling game. And you can see I'm getting to look at part of the world. Oh, there you go. Not that successful. Um, but I was getting to see part of the world as I moved along. It was scrolling along. That's often used in a platform game. It can be really good. Um, as you progress in a game, you tend to make it harder to get on. Um, and that makes people sort of gripped into the game. So from the advanced features of many levels, where do we go? Well, we go on to good graphics. Good graphics make a game. And we haven't left you um, unprovided here. Uh, on our website, once again, we have a section on graphics for you. It's a graphics library. It's under resources, insects. And uh, it's under image library, right? whoops, image library. And uh, it says sprites library. Click on it. You might get, oh, this isn't secure. Uh, you can go through to it, it is secure. Um, and you can download an individual image or a sprite. The sprites you can load directly and then animate. And they will have one or two images in them, two. Uh, for sure. Okay, so that's where you get your images. And um, so that really brings us to the last one. And of course, the last one is the end one. Good endings. Have a clear screen which splashes up when you've won. Give the person some information like their score. You might even say their score is excellent. You know, if they're above 500, go to a splash screen which says excellent. If they're below 300, go to a, a screen which says they're just okay. Um, do better next time. Uh, you will also need screens for if you if you lose, uh, and those are sort of teaser screens, which says you, you lose, try better next time. Um, yeah, don't make them too mean, um, but that's the idea of those. So you, you want to look at the key steps, the seven steps, ideas, winning strategy, controlling the game through variables, goodies and baddies, Expanding the game through many rooms and levels, having great graphics, good ending, seven steps. Um, and that's that brings us uh, really to the last phases, guys. And I think um, we'll transition and look at the internet. So the next stage is we're going to go into a question and answer section. And your questions and answers are going to be found in Key Competition Streamed Workshop, where you found this video. And just underneath it is the question and answer session. So go in, have a, have, we'll be there in a few minutes time. You can start adding your questions. Uh, let's say in five minutes time, we'll open it up and start giving you responses. Um, Great. So um, I think it all, all it uh, requires of me is to say good luck. Enjoy making your games. We're here to help you stay in contact and uh, just enjoy the process. Bye.